I ask you to pardon me for all I have done, and all I will confess. Yes, I killed them, and many others. This was Louis Garavitio, and this is the good, the bad, and the pure evil. So a really difficult and horrific story today. Listeners and viewers' discretion is advised. Louis Garavitio was born 25th of January 1957 in Quindino, Colombia, to Manuel and Rosa. Louis said Manuel was not a good guy. He'd have affairs, constantly was drunk, and was very strict and both physically and emotionally abusive to Louis. Describing his mother, he called her violent and gave Louis pretty much zero affection or care throughout his life. His parents' marriage was very unstable and brought years of violence, fights and neglect to the home. At about six or seven, Louis remembers being strapped to a tree and beaten by his father for defending his mother. Beating soon became random for no real reason and they were so severe, so much so, Louis and his siblings had hid once their father came home. Sleeping in the same bed as dear old dad, Louis alleges unwanted touching would happen. His father would be verbally abusive to Louis, calling him stupid and a lot worse. There was no happy memories, no father and son bonding moments. At school he was shy and often bullied and he had a violent temper. Teachers said he liked learning but would get very angry if he couldn't understand a subject. Bullies called him Garabato or squiggle, because he wore glasses, which had him very insecure and withdrawn from kids in fear of being mocked. 1968, he wanted to leave school and go to work, but his father wouldn't allow this. His father also didn't allow any friends or girlfriends. 1969, Louis was physically and intrusively abused by a family friend. According to Louis, he was bound to a bed and burnt with a candle He would be cut with a blade and sometimes bitten before being intrusively abused. This traumatised Louis and had him lash out at animals, often killing them and then have him ashamed for what he had just done. After this, he became intrusive to his siblings. Those who knew him said he now became withdrawn, aggressive and quote, ready to take revenge on the world. End quote. This traumatised Louis and had him lash out at animals, often killing them, and then have him ashamed for what he had done. After this, he became intrusive to his siblings. Those who knew him said he was withdrawn at this time, aggressive, and quote, ready to take revenge on the world. End quote. The abuse with his family friend ended in 1971 when the family moved, but the trauma stayed with Louis and it affected him mentally and physically having performance issues well into his adulthood. Fearing no one would believe him, Louis told nobody what happened. In Tregilio, a family friend showed him gay porn. When Louis showed disgust, he was beaten and intrusively assaulted once again. In 1972, he aggressively pursued women, but being rejected each and every time. The family was alcoholics, and so alcohol was common in the home. Soon, Louis would also become an alcoholic. He was rebellious and deviant, and was kicked out of the home time and time again. In 1973, he tried to intrusively assault a six-year-old boy at a train station. The boy was smart enough to scream out, and police were called. They arrested Louis and charged him. He stated he, quote, lightly, quote, wanted to assault the boy. With his homosexuality causing massive issues at the home, he was thrown permanently out of the family home. Louis then worked as an assistant at a compensation fund and he'd studied marketing. But soon he'd have issues with co-workers, then clients, and finally bosses, with it escalated into fights. He'd lose his job and become a street vendor selling religious items. In the 70s, he worked on a coffee plantation and fell in love with Luce Mary Ocampo Orozaco, a single mother and a school teacher. 
The women he became close with usually had children and he was said to treat them as his own. He was also said to be a loving boyfriend when sober, but drunk. He was extremely jealous, controlling, and would eventually turn to violence. This had him often talk, uh, uh, talked about in the town and frequently chucked out by the women that he was with. He would be tortured by psychosis, paranoia, paranoia and depression from what had happened in his childhood. Most of the 70s and 80s, he intrusively assaulted kids as he spiralled into madness. With depression and the want to leave the world, he thought a family would content him, would keep him, would save him. He'd find women under the influence and engage in baby making, but from his past trauma, he couldn't perform. And the night would end with him ranting about how much he hated his family. To cope with all this, he drank and he drank, but in 1978, he started Alcoholics Anonymous. He converted to Pentecostal apostol, uh, Protestant faith and worked as a store clerk. At this point, he reconnected with Liz Mary, although only briefly. His family had nothing to do with him, apart from an older sister called Esther, although she would avoid him because of his alcoholic problems. He went to a town in Armenia, in Armenia and had a bakery job, but was fired after a fight. He then tried to leave this world by his own hands. So this didn't work and he went back into psychiatric care at San Juan de Dios Hospital. And he was in and out of here for the spring of 1980, where he'd say he felt useless and wanted to leave this world. He was diagnosed with depressed depression and given meds. He wanted to be honest and Louis told the psychiatrist he wanted children. With a concerning look from the psychiatrist, Louis corrected it to as in a family sort of way. Fearing telling the actual truth, he would steer away, giving small testing hints and undoing if the reaction was concerning. He'd go to church and he would beat his chest raw in prayers. He went to AA, he visited psychiatrists and ended his day in a park known for buying children. He had a job at a supermarket and started seeing a woman called Claudia in 1980. Once again, she was a single mother who he said he actually liked. But it didn't last as Louis couldn't keep up with Claudia's shopping addiction. While working, he got two hours for lunch and in this time he would find children and do what was done to him as a child. Their names he would put in a blue notebook and when he returned, he'd pray, pace and beat his chest in his room. He'd feel bad, he'd become depressed and had nightmares of the children having him wake crying uncontrollably until it, he went into constant laughing. At this point, he became interested in the occult and readings of this. He read Hitler's Mein Kampf and seen himself in Hitler, idolizing him. January 25th, 1984, Louis was in psychiatric care unit and he was let out February 28th. He fled to Perea and immediately found two children to torture. He then started to gather scalpels, candles, blades for future victims. At this point, he had tortured over 100 children. He became fascinated with the killer Campo, Ellis Delgado. Louis wanted to emanulate him, had him had dreams of getting an, uh, an item to take out his father. He would also uh, wanted to end his family and then he would leave this world by his own hands. He met another girlfriend, Garcilia Zabaleta, and again she was a single mother. She let him live with her and he paid the bills. Early on he showed Zabaleta and her family love and care and affection, but his alcoholism still was about. While drunk, he was seen overly cosy to young children, but no one even thought anything malicious was about to happen. 
In 1988, Louis began keeping crime items in a suitcase, a suitcase that he kept at his female friends' homes. So we are going to jump forward now to 1992, and at this point, Louis tortured over 200 youths, and he was in and out of psychiatric care units with many a failed attempts on his life. And wherever he was, child assault reports would double, if not travel. At some point, he taught to use a Ouija, a Ouija board, and this is when, according to Louis, the Prince of Darkness asked him to kill for him. October 1st, 1992, while drunk, Louis found a boy selling sweets and lured him away to, but local police would follow. They battered Louis, took his money, and then took him to a police station, where he was released. Three days later, on October 4th, Louis killed his first victim, Juan Carlos. From then, Louis wore disguises to evade being identified. Louis would be called locally Goofy. He kept records of his crimes with tickets, receipts, clothes, all in a black suitcase. This suitcase he left at his sister's Esther and then at Liz Mary's. In June 1996, he contacted Luce Mary and complained he had lost his job. He begged for a place to stay. And she was aware of his drinking issues and temper that came with it, but she allowed him to stay with her. In the August, he broke his leg and being laid up, he began begging on the streets for money. After a fight with Luz Mary's son about a TV, Luz Mary chucked Louis out. He called her that Christmas, screaming at her. At this point, Liz Mary said he was no longer welcome, but he appeared the next day, screaming and being violent. Liz Mary and her family hid, and after a while, Louis left. He left a note for forgiveness, and he apologised. So October 4th, he murdered Juan Carlos. He then went to Esther October 10th. He tried to control his urges with brandy, but he would kill John Pen Penaranda on his way to Esther. He would compulsively kill young, mainly boys, from poor backgrounds. October 1992, a lot of kids were disappeared in Colombia. November 7th, 1998, kids found a skeleton in Perea, but police didn't do much uh, until November 15th where a mass grave of 36 children was found. Then 41 children were found in Rezalda and 27 more in Val del Cucca. This had a huge investigation, as you can imagine. And on February 6, 1999, two more children were found and another the day after. But this time, the killer left things. Louis had passed out drunk holding a lit cigarette. This had a fire start, and he burned himself so badly, and when he fled, he left money, glasses, shoes, clothes, receipts, and the address of Garcia Sabaleta on a note. The glasses indicated the killer was middle-aged, with a lazy left eye. The clothes had him about 5 foot 4 to 5 foot 6 inches, and the shoes had him walk with a limp. A young boy would accuse Louis, and the main detective had Louis as the guy to do all of these killings. A girlfriend at the time said she hadn't seen him for months and gave them a black suitcase. Inside this black suitcase was photos of the victims, journals of the murders, and bills. Days later, Louis picked up on a different charge. He tried to assault John Sepulgala. Luckily for John, the attempt was heard by a homeless kid who stoned Louis. The boys fled and got the police who came and arrested Louis. DNA was found on the victims and while Louis was out of his cell, police took DNA from his pillow and it was a match. Louis confessed to 140 murders and was charged with 172. He was found guilty on 138 charges and sentenced to 1,853 years in jail. But Colombia has law limits and you can only imprison for 40 years. 
and with him helping police, he was only sentenced to 22 years. He is eligible for parole in 2023. And that is the story of Louis Garavito. Hit that like button and if you're not subscribed, please get subscribed and ring the hell out of that bell. Next time is the story of Jimmy Hoffa, American labor union leader who became involved with organized crime. In 1975, he vanishes. Until then, this was the good, the bad and the pure evil. Thank you.